Kristen Matwaye of Basketball Wives and Chris Marie on Instagram. Yes. And so we are going to just jump right in, everybody. Go ahead and tell everybody about yourself a little bit. Again, I'm Kristen Matwaye. <laughs> um, again, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter, Chris Marie, that's C R I S S M A R I E. Um, let's see, I'm from LA. I'm an adopted Detroitan. <laughs> um, Let's see, what people don't know about me from the show is I am a photographer. Let's just get that. I'm used to being okay. behind, not in front. Okay. Um, I've been doing that for about eight years now. Um, let's see, what else is about me? I love to paint. <laughs> I'm very so artsy. Very artsy. Yes. I'm a very, very artsy artist. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm working on um, a book right now, a self-motivating book, um, just for quotes, self-motivating quotes. Okay. Um, yeah, that kind of sums me up. Awesome. And really one other right thing now. that she so humbly left out is that she oh, has yeah. her shirt on, which is her shirt. Line. Go ahead and talk about that. Oh, yes. Sorry, it's a little fuzzy, but um, yes, no. Uh, well, my boy, well, it's actually my boyfriend and his uh, brother's line. It's mm -hmm. called a. Uh, Detroit's own and you can find us on Instagram right now Detroit's own um, Just like it's spelled um, And we have shirts on sale um, DJ BJ actually wore a shirt uh, when he did his imported from Detroit Okay, thing. shout out. He is a great yes, DJ. Yes, yes. Everybody knows him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. he actually wore a shirt uh, during that whole his whole Like rap battle thing. Was, okay. Yes. Cool. Major shout out love. Um, but yeah, this is our shirt line. This is um, something I, I'm a part of out here. Okay. So. Good. That's awesome. And we are so lucky to have you in the tree. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Basketball wives. Yeah. That's the burning question, the million yes. dollar question that everybody wants to know about. Yes. Why basketball wives? What even makes you sign? Had you seen the show before? You know what's so funny is I, I guess you can say I grew up on it. Okay. <laughs> the original. Basketball is Miami. Mm -hmm. I like was obsessed with them, um, and how I actually came to be on the show is they actually um, had offered my sister, uh, who was on the show with me. Um, they came to ask her if she wanted to be a part, and she was like, "Oh yeah, oh my god, like I have another sister, and she dates a basketball player." Right. right? And so quick loop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know, two for one deal. So, so yeah. So that's honestly how. I um, joined the show, or joined the cast, or however you want to say it, um, is I came on with my sister. And let's talk a little bit about the show. Uh, prior to us filming, mm -hmm. we talked a bit about what it's like to have several cameras following you around <laughs> and tracking every step that you do. So if I'm on reality TV, what does that look like? It would look like us sitting right here like we are, <laughs> but uh, we would have lighting right. um, if it's not like a day, if, we're, if it's not like a day shoot. Um, you'll have your sound guy, um, you'll have a camera that's facing me, there will be a camera facing you, and then a camera facing both of us. <laughs> and, yeah, and then you'll have just about four or five people watching you writing down what you're saying then you have people in the back that are listening so it's a, it's a setup honey it, so when it, you are trying to live your trying to live your best life okay right like you're trying to go out and have dinner and whatnot and there are seven to eight people filming and writing what you're saying and wh what is that like you know what in the beginning i'm not gonna lie it was super awkward because it's like the, they they tell you don't look at the camera so you're like <laughs> as you go exactly you're talking <laughs> and then you're like you know because there's one like directly facing me so and, you know at times you're like and they're like Kristen stop looking at the camera and you're like you know what I mean so that was hard to get used to in the beginning but then after a while when you're like like in just involved in a conversation or mm -hmm. mess or whatever you're dealing with it's like okay. you forget everything they're like oh what the you know what yeah, I mean it's like right. you're more engaged right that you tend to just block everything else out until they have to say wait 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 we need your mic no like you know what I mean if you've been stormed off or anything they're like wait 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 no come back 
come back. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, that's, that would seem kind of overwhelming. So, would you candy. say that, are the cameras around 24 seven or are they around yeah. sometimes? Or how um, often do you film? So, um, you'll pretty much, we'll have a scene together. Okay. And then we'll do our scene for probably about a couple, maybe like three hours. And it's whatever comes out of that three hours. So they schedule them in advance. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So yes. how do people act surprised like they don't know that somebody is going no, to no, be there? No, no. But see, and that's that's the thing, though. We could be in a conversation, and I don't know another girl is going to walk in that I probably don't like, don't want to talk to, and they'll just pop in. So it's like your natural reaction. So when people are like, oh, it's scripted, oh, no, it's not, you know I what I mean? See. Or it can be like a conversation I had with like another lady and she told you something that I said oh. and then you're like, okay, but wait, you're kicking in my face, but didn't it <laughs> change you? Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like you're like, we're kicking, but didn't you just say, and it's, it's really like natural reactions, natural conversations that really go the way that they go. It's not scripted at all. Okay, and I probably was in the majority of people who were like, these it's ladies scripted. are just yeah. at the restaurant and oh, camera. Oh my no. God. So no. that's very interesting. No. I but see, see I will say it, it would be like something like we're like we're just like I said, we're talking mm -hmm. or like you'll know to say something to me. Oh. You know what I mean? mean? Just like say like, just like I said, either from a previous conversation or, you know, it'll just get brought up like, okay, throw this in um, and see what happens. So it's a little guided conversation, though natural. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like a, it's like they just plant the seed okay. <laughs> and, and you water it the way you want to water it. I see. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. So uh, what were your experiences like on the show? And yeah. I'm up. <laughs> I know, no, I definitely I'm like, wait, I, I can't even it. imagine. Like, I can't even imagine. I mean, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, my experience on the show is I'm, I had good, I had bad, you know what I mean? What people didn't, under, under, um, didn't understand is like I came off a lot of uh, really emotional. And I was going to ask that um, do you think that the production is. Um, creates personalities for people or do you think that they show accurately how people's personalities are obviously you said that you might be have been portrayed a little bit more emotional on the show than maybe that you are yeah yeah i was definitely portrayed a little bit more emotional than i really am in person like i would say in person i'm goofy i love to laugh i make jokes i give people nicknames you know what i mean like i'm that person right. i'm that bubbly person right. um but I came off emotional is because of, you know, personal stuff, what I was dealing with with family members, you know, regarding the show. And it was just like certain things were coming at me and it's just like all I could do is be like, what? Right. Right. In the moment. Yeah, you're like, what? You know what I mean? But I will say that's one thing that is not me. I'm, I, of course, I'm a woman, I'm emotional, but that emotional, I'm not a cry baby. You right. know what I mean? Right. But that's the only thing I will say I felt like I wish more of like me me was shown versus the cry the cry and well me side. Do you feel like you were given that storyline kind of to give you a place on the show or to give you a story this is Kristen and these things happen to her and you know I feel like it was probably a little bit of everything okay. you know what I mean because just like I said of course they are working with what they have okay. you know what I mean so it's like I can't it's like if like certain situations that I'm in if it brings out the emotional side of me you know what I mean even though you might not see the full conversation to see why I got to that place you know it's like that's what you get so it's like they have to work with what they got so it just so happened gotcha. I was crying a lot <laughs> Uh, and so to segue, one of the reasons I guess that you were more emotional than uh, the normal was because of the criticism of your style. Yes. What exactly is your style to set the record straight? You know, to set the record straight, it depends on what day it is. Okay. You know what I mean? Just like we were talking earlier and you're like, yeah, but that's really me. 
you know, like what you said, it's like like today, you know, I have our shirt on, I have some Tim's because people don't understand, it's rainy. It is, today. it is. It's very rainy and gloomy. I have a big leather, <laughs> leather jacket, you know, so it just depends on how I woke up and how I'm feeling that day, you know. Um, that's really, I can't even, I guess you, I could say casual chic. <laughs> <laughs> casual chic. That's 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 the only thing I say because I'm I'm a very casual person. Like I'm, if I don't have to, I won't get all super. Agree. It's Agreed. like I'm rather I'm I'm a really chill person. You Agreed. know what I mean? I might be too laid back sometimes, but I'm just a really laid back, chill, natural person. True. Uh, <laughs> as am I. I mean, I'm not. I'm looking right now. Oh no! You, you know, I'm like. <laughs> No. Let's see what I need to throw on for this, <laughs> for this today. Uh, so some of the cast members on the show, uh, like we said, talked a little bit about you. How did that affect you? You know what? Going into it, it's like, of course, I have a hard outer layer. You know what I mean? And so it didn't bother me when I was in it, but when I actually saw the episodes with everyone else, because we don't see them. I was so I like, see yeah. them when you see them. So it's like watching it back, it's like, hmm. So people were laughing at me. Like, you know, you just you just break everything down like so it was a joke and then it was brought to my attention. You know what I mean? Like that part was hard to deal with just because of, you know, I was dealing with the fact that I had gained weight. You know what I mean? I was trying to dress for for what I felt was appropriate and comfortable to myself at the time. You know, so it was just like, mm, Ugh, you ain't how you say you was or you know what I mean it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way watching it you know what I mean but it's just like hey you just another person in the line talking you got know? you <laughs> do you feel that you have genuine relationships with some of the cast members outside of the show or was it just mm, they asked me to be on this show so I'm gonna go kiki with these little ladies on camera for a little bit and then go home and collect my check Got you. Oh, but okay. there is one, I will have to say, there is one that I knew before the show, okay. um, which was Bonnie Jill. And okay. I've known her for, I've known her, before we even did the show, I knew her for about 10 years prior to the show. So I would say, like, that was one of my genuine friends on the show because it's like we had a, a relationship way before. It. What's crazy is we didn't even know we were both doing the show. Okay. So it was like one time we walked into the scene, I'm like, what she just hey, was like, why you didn't tell me? You know, why you didn't tell me? You know, it was one of those moments. But other than that, you know, I can't call none of the other ladies like my actual friend. You know what I mean? It's like associates when I see, hey, I do love Jennifer though. She okay. was, she was a sweetheart. She was actually just out here uh, last week and um, she did an event and I and I went with her. So nice. she's a sweetheart. But it, you know, it's just like, hey, it is what it is. It's work. <laughs> Did you know, this work show, friends. <laughs> true, feel you. Did the show impact your uh, family at all or your home life? What What was the show like for them? Um. Well, see, the fact that when I I'm so close with my family, my boyfriend's family, it's like every time I came home, it's like they knew what was going on because it's like if I came home mad, I was cussing, cussing wherever out but I was telling them so it's like they knew what I was going through and they were like my backbone my biggest support system going through that my daughter's only six so she doesn't she's just like oh mommy's on tv yay <laughs> you know she's like that but everyone else they they knew it like it's just a process you know you're going through this for a, a reason you know what I mean you're gonna have a great story to tell it's gonna help somebody else you just have to stay strong and go through it so that's how my family was with me when I was like I don't want to do this no more you know when I was on that they were just like no stick with it like it something's gonna come out just you know so have you found what is to come out of that or what have you gained from your experiences on the show I have found my little niche okay. which I will say that's where the book came from she has my book, did, y'all. I, I'm coming, yes, the book is going to be coming. <laughs> I'm writing all my thoughts down. Um, but yeah, that's where um, like a lot of my inspiration for uh, my anti-bullying um, is coming from my campaign that I'm um, starting. Because what people don't understand is like when I went through what I went through, it's like to me, 
I didn't really digest it as, oh, I was bullied, because I didn't look at it like that. I just looked at it like, oh, girls being catty. But when my DMs, my emails, people approach, like if I tell you people approach me all the time, you know, just like, you know, I, you, whether it's a, a boyfriend, a friend that's talked about their weight, you know, just their hair, you know, just anything on them to where they felt belittled. It's like they've come to me like, you know, how you handled yourself and how you carried yourself has really helped me. You know, they, when I tell you, I, I can, I have emails and emails on women just like spilling their heart out to me and asking me for advice, you know, because they're just like, you've handled your, yourself in a situation similar to this, you know what I mean? What should I do? And so from there, you know, I try to rent, run away from the situation. I'm not going to lie because bullying is such a, like, that is a serious word, you know, label. Yeah, that whole so, thing is, it's like if you're going to do it, do it and do it right. You know what I mean? Like that's something we play for because people lose their lives behind that word and right. those actions. And when bullying, just to be clear, it's just not physical. It's right. mental, emotional, verbal. You know, verbal. It's it's all that in one. And so just from people approaching me with that, I was just like, I would talk to like my mother-in-law, I would talk to my parents. I'm just like, these women, they keep talking to me. And they're just like, well, God's trying to tell you something. <laughs> you know, so stop running from it. And after a while, I just started answering emails. I started answering DMs. I actually started just talking to women that were walking up to me. And it's like, I was saying stuff, I'm just like, no, where did I come from? Like, girl, do <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was just like, you know what, this is something I need to do. You know what I mean? I, I can't run from it no more. Obviously, you know, something that I'm doing or saying is impacting people. So I was like, I just have to speak out. So that's how it fell in my lap. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So are you starting a program or is it just the book now? Well, it's it's the book. I'm starting with the book and then I'm going to go into like different schools. Um, I'm going to just picking right now. We're picking up uh, speaking engagements and we're open to any other speaking engagements. Even my management, um, it's going pro and uh, the number is 313 yeah, four four five five six wait five three two six if not I'll say that one more time before the show's over but that's my management if you guys want me to come out and speak I'm okay. jot it down people she's available <laughs> <laughs> so um so yeah so so I guess uh to segue a little from that what is next for you outside of the uh bullying program I know that you have the t-shirt line and that's pretty cool. Yes, Do you want to talk about that? Yes, we have this Detroit's own. This is only one of this is our first t-shirt. We have another one I can't say it yet because we have you know, top secret. We have to get no, top secret. Girl, we have you know <laughs> you have, we have to get these stuff copywritten. You know what I mean? Got but, you, uh, got you. We have another one. This is just our this was our first shirt and we've sold out already. So it's like it's yeah, people like really love the shirt, so we're working on that. We have a second version coming out. Okay. And um, I'm trying to get them to start doing the LA one. I mean, I love you, Detroit. But I'm right from my city. Back to my <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so right now we're just, you know, bringing more light to Detroit because, like, what I tell people, they're like, oh, you live out there too. And I'm like, you guys understand, like, Detroit is a beautiful city Thank you. it Thank is you. like Thank you and, for it. and it has come back around like it's i i've seen the change like because i've been with my boyfriend for eight years so i when i first came out here pregnant i saw where i was like Ugh. you know lock my door but now i'm just like it's beautiful your downtown is beautiful mm -hmm. you and have I, a new arena yeah the new, new arena buildings, new shops new yes. districts mm -hmm. housing yes 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 and we we even we have a building downtown too so that we're gonna be yes, yes. Building. yes what's the building oh well right now it's going to be a sports bar restaurant okay. it's off of jefferson so we're in the remodeling stages of that so we're helping bring more light to detroit so nice. like, this city what people don't understand is like if you do your research it was such a beautiful city 
back then, mm-hmm. and it's like it needs more love now because it's mm-hmm. rejuvenation. Yes, oh, yes, exfoliating yes. to Detroit. <laughs> exactly. So it's like right now, I'm like whatever I can do, like with my boyfriend and his family because they're big advocates out here. I'm like whatever I can do, I'm willing to help. <laughs> Nice. And to finally conclude the show, if you had to leave young girls with one message or something that you want to tell them, what would it be? If I... Well, kind of two. Yeah, sure. Okay, two. One thing is what I do every morning, and I feel like it helps me just get my day started right, is I take affirmations and I put them on my mirror that I read to myself mm-hmm. every morning. And it doesn't matter how I wake up, if I wake up mad, sad, happy, it's like they always help me speak to me. And what people think that, oh, you read the same thing every day, but you get a different vibe vibe. every time, Mm -hmm. a different meaning from it every time you read it to yourself out loud. So I will say, uh, young women, young girls, find something, Google inspirational quotes, whatever. Find that one thing that speaks to you and read it to yourself every morning. And then two is don't ever keep yourself in a situation that makes you feel belittled, um, that doesn't empower you. Whether it's a friend, family members, you know, boyfriend, work relationships, it's like separate yourself because all you have is your energy and you know your spirit and if that those two aren't fed the right way it's just you're gonna deteriorate so just keep positive positivity around you that's I agree I cannot agree with you more <laughs> seriously those things come in common with are come in handy when you are having a hard time a lot of people go through those things every day so and I do the same thing when I was studying for the bar I had to put things up on the mirror so I would not lose my mind. Mm-hmm. Like, they're trying to get them. Yeah, like they're at <laughs> overload, overload. Well, I think this is a good place to end, so we want to thank you sincerely from Everything okay. Detroit for coming on the show. And if you want to give out your number again for the management, just so we don't forget. Yes, okay. Then again, if you guys want to reach out and have me do any guest appearances, speaking engagements, anything I'm open to, I'm out here. Uh, My management is going pro. Again, the number is 310-445-5236. So hit her up, people. We definitely want to make sure we get her out to your events, speaking engagement. She has a lot of great things to talk about and is positively represented LA in the city of Detroit. And we are so honored to have her here. I'm trying to kick!